With this slider here, I can control an Aurora inside of Adobe After Effects. And in this video, I will be showing you how you can create your own using the LaForge plugin. You can download a free trial of the plugin on the Production Create website. We've linked it below as well as a video on how to install it in case you have any problems. LaForge is a plugin that can do so much. It has a bunch of different presets such as glows, height relighters, energy G balls, God rays, ocean generators, and it also allows you to create your own plugins. But anyway, let's download the plugin and get started. So now I am in After Effects and I just want to quickly talk about what makes a good piece of footage to add an aurora to. Part of this process is converting it to a night scene. And so you want to shoot footage that doesn't have any direct sunlight. Either shoot it when it's overcast or just after the sun has set. The next thing that you want to do is actually rotoscope your footage. If you look at it you can see that the mountain tops here go above the horizon. And so when you imagine the aurora is sitting in the sky, we just need to make sure that anything that should be in front of it is. Now, if you look at the footage, you can see that our horizon has this layer of fog. And so all we have to do here is create a mask for it. And combining the mountains and the masked horizon creates this perfect foreground that's going to make it very easy for us to composite. The next step in preparation is actually creating a 3D camera. And so I'll just quickly add that here. The processing is complete and you can see this very nice track here, it's very stable. And this will help us track the aurora into the background. So I will now create the camera and I want to now create a new solid. And let's name it the aurora. Now you just have to go to the production create effect menu and add a LaForge effect. Start up the panel. And once that's loaded, you can then click on the Aurora preset. And on the bottom right, you can see a nice apply button here. So once I close that, you can immediately see this beautiful Aurora has been created. And scrolling through the timeline, you can actually see that the 3D camera has automatically hooked onto the effect. Let's do something cheeky and set the blending mode of the Aurora layer to a screen blend mode. And immediately you can see that LaForge has integrated the Aurora onto our footage. Look how beautifully it tracks into the way it's already animated for you. So we've previously done the rotoscoping. All I have to do is take those layers above the Aurora and set their visibility back on. Wow. It just works. Look at that. Look how the mountain is just perfectly sitting on top. Did you see how quick this was? This makes me so happy because we've only spent three minutes on it and it already looks incredible. So in the LaForge effect, let's begin to explore the parameters that are available. The first one is the warp setting and this simply says how much curl should there be in the Aurora. And so setting that to a low setting gives a very cloudy appearance, but increasing that creates this beautiful swirling pattern. We also have a scale parameter and the lower the value, the larger the aurora becomes. It almost looks like the aurora is being pushed up and down, but this is just a consequence of the far away parts of the aurora being scaled down towards you. And setting this to a low value can sometimes give you very beautiful results that don't look like a noise texture, but instead a genuine part of the environment. The next setting is the aurora length parameter, and that simply says how tall should your aurora be. You can see these rays get longer the larger this value is. As a side note, you can actually set this to a negative value, which creates this inverted pattern. It almost looks like something is piercing through the fabric of reality. The exposure parameter is very simple, just use this to make it brighter or darker. The star brightness, if I isolate the aurora layer, 
we can actually see that stars are being included in this effect. And this helps you create that nighttime setting. So increasing the stars and the star brightness sliders helps you control how starry the night sky should look. Now, similar to how a noise effect works, you can use the aurora detail to control the roughness of the aurora effect. But setting it to something high like 90 gives you a more realistic and interesting looking pattern. The ground visibility and ground reflection sliders allow you to control the reflection on the ground. And this really helps if you're compositing the auroras over a lake or an ocean, because you can use this ground to simulate the reflections on the surface of the water. A very useful slider is the amount slider, and this allows you to increase or decrease the amount of auroras that there are in your footage. Not every aurora is as grand and spectacular as the National Geographic photos, so doing something subtle is a great way to preserve the realism of your shot. The drop horizon parameter is a very useful tool when you need it. Sometimes you don't want to see all the way into infinity, and so the drop horizon artificially drags the sky down, which is great if you only want want to showcase a small fragment of the aurora. The speed parameter allows you to control the rate that the aurora evolves through time, and increasing this allows you to give it the appearance that it's in some sort of time lapse. Now, if you focus on this patch of sky here, you can see it's kind of tinted red, and this is actually because of the footage itself. Now, usually when you have a bright light in the sky, such as this green aurora, it illuminates the haze and the fog around it. And so we can actually simulate this with the sky glow parameter. If I increase this slowly, you can see it now feels far more integrated into the footage. Now, usually you do not need to touch the iterations parameter, but if you're interested, we can look closely at this portion of the effect here. And when I decrease this slider, you can see that this Aurora is actually made of a bunch of slices. And so increasing this can help iron out any of those weird artifacts. Now for my favorite effect, the color parameter. So I will begin by changing this to maybe a red. Oh, look how spooky that is. We can go with a purple or a yellow or an orange or maybe a blue. And then for the top, I want to give it a purple color maybe. Oh, wow. It feels like we're in the North Pole. So I found the settings that I like the most and I'm just going to use the time offset slider to find a beginning point that I like the pattern of. I quite like that, you can see it's like sliding into the horizon like a, an upside down river. So now let's do some color correction to make the footage actually look like it's taking place at night. So to make it easy for myself, I'm going to begin by pre-composing the two roto layers and I can just name them the foreground and then I will drop the aurora above that layer. And with the new track mat update, we can actually use the layer beneath the aurora as the mat. So all I will do here is invert it and we've got the same result. But with the added benefit of us being able to add an adjustment layer above the footage and the foreground, but not on the aurora. So there's a no right or wrong way to make a piece of footage look like it's at nighttime. Having a good dynamic range in your footage really does help. But in this situation, what I will do is begin by tinting the image so that it becomes black and white. And now that we have neutralized the image, I will be adding a curves effect. And using the individual channels, I will adjust the colors of the background until it matches the lights in the sky, adding some contrast to the green channel, maybe bumping up the blues, bit less red. And you can see this is already looking so much better. Now I will go even further and add another curves adjustment and position this above the original curves effect. And this allows us to more easily manipulate the brightness of the footage. So something I don't really like is that the footage is interfering with the brightness of the auroras. 
So what I will do to counter this is create a new adjustment layer, put it beneath the Aurora, and then I will use a curves effect to decrease its brightness. Now you can see that our ground has been eliminated in this darkening effect. So all I am going to do is apply another track mat to this adjustment layer using the same foreground that our Aurora is using. Inverting that again should do this. Now technically we need to bring this adjustment layer below the original adjustment layer because we're manipulating brightnesses before the color corrections are made. But you can see just how beautiful this is looking. It really does look like some sort of nighttime scene in Iceland or Antarctica. And there you go, that's how you can create your own Aurora effect inside of After Effects. A huge shout out to Stormoid for helping to create this beautiful preset. If you want to talk to our community or ask us any questions, feel free to join us on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and remember to make it awesome.